begin the conversation now. And first and foremost, let's listen to our partners as we understand more on how their mind works on this very important conversation. Let me bring on the stage the executive director of Kimpak Development Initiative, Mr. Bukola Idowu. Bukola, it's good to see you. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Good evening, everyone, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and citizens of Edo State. It is with great honor we welcome you to this town hall on election security. Over the past month, Kimpa Development Initiative has been tracking and documenting the issue of electoral violence and issue of violence generally in, the, in Edo State. And it is important to know that we have documented a lot of issues that raise concern. And it is on this note that Kimpa Development Initiative, with the support of the UK Foreign Commonwealth Development Office, thought it right to have this conversation, bringing stakeholders together and to have conversation. Because the, mo the election coming on Saturday is a very crucial one. And it is very crucial because we need to have a peaceful atmosphere in the state. Whether we like it or not, Edo State will remain. Election will come and go. And that is why we need to have conversation. Now, there have been worrying rhetorics, alarms, utterances as we move towards the election. We need to remind the actors that election is a civic affair, not a war, and we are not preparing for war. As we move closer to this election, and I'm happy with the support of FCDO and also Shannes Television to have this conversation, and I want to encourage everyone that come Saturday, let's come out, participate peacefully in the election, and God bless Edo State. And we shall have peaceful election come Saturday. Thank you very much. You already imagine as one of the heroes of this election <laughs> as yet to happen because of this initiative. Our thanks to the FCDO yeah. for their support for this very important initiative. And a lot of people might be wondering, why are you guys concerned about uh, security? And we put in, in that promotional video on yeah. China's television, Without security, there can never be election. election. Don't forget there are times INEC had warned and threatened that they will not go to any election field if they're not guaranteed See, of security. security. So, Absolutely. Bukala, Absolutely. I know you and your team, you've done a lot of work as to the violence, the security situation. You've tried as much as possible to put some data together. Yeah. Let's get to it together. Yeah. And so let's look at what exactly we've seen. In, in less than one year, since January the 1st, this year, 95 violence incidents, that's what has been recorded. Yes, 95 from January 1st to September 14th. And this is the combination of the violence that are happening in Edo State in specific, to be specific. And this is the combination of electoral and non-electoral violence. Right. And that's, that is what the figure is saying. So we, we get to know, let's disaggregate. Let's look at the ones that are related to the election and the ones that are not related to the election. So let's look at it. So we right. have 35 electoral violence, violence, uh, violence uh, uh, related to the election Elections. and the ones that are just violence relating to societal issues and all what yes. of you. Absolutely. So of course, when you look at the non-electoral violence, you are talking about the normal kidnapping that have nothing to do with um, elections, that land issues and the rest. But when you look at the electoral violence, and it is worrying, if you have non-electoral violence, 60 in numbers from January 1, you can't 1, 2, 3, 60 in numbers. Now, electoral violence within the window of the campaign, and you have more than 50% of these, of the uh, non-electoral violence, and that is worrying. It calls for concern. Yeah, so let's find out where the tension, where the uprising <laughs> started from. And it started just around the election, as yeah. you mentioned. See, look at how the graph was coming. Up until about June, we saw the rising in the figures of electoral-related Violence in a doorstep. So it rose and it spiked in August. In August alone, we saw more than 10 electoral violence uh, ele violent, uh, related to election yeah. in Edo State. Yeah. And, and, and that is very instructive because it's also letting us know that as we move closer to the election, tension rises and then cases begin to grow. Of course, in, in, in July, we had a, this unfortunate um, incident where the policeman was killed and then it kept moving. Now, if you look at it in September, just in 14 days, we already have four 
But that does not mean that this, we should go and rest because there is a possibility of election day violence and post-election post day. day. And that is why, it, when you look at it, it is very, very important for us to keep having conversation. And the most important thing is we can leave this, we can do everything possible to leave this number at this point without increasing. So it's important, and we, we're seeing some of the most crucial days ahead of us. Yeah. Um, some of the political parties held their grand finale yesterday. Campaigns. Some held one on Friday. Yeah. And we, we are seeing more politically related activities, mm -hmm. campaigns that are gradually winding down. You will see preparations from political parties and candidates yeah. moving here and there because yeah. this is a very crucial. It's like a student preparing for exams. Exactly. This, <laughs> these are crucial hours for them and tension are high. And we're seeing a lot of videos flying up and down about do or die. Uh, we're going to kill this. We're going to do that. We're going to resist them and all that. Those <laughs> messaging are really causing tension, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and we, we've seen the spike as we move closer. And one of the things we have also seen is that it looks like politicians just let loose on the campaign ground. Mm. You know, it's just like as if they see the, when they see the crowd, they are able to say anything. But the one thing they fail to recognize is that those rhetorics, those utterances, they people that you are speaking to have the capacity to take it beyond what you even mean. So, because you don't even have the luxury of time to begin to explain what you mean to people. Supporters are more and emotional, are more emotional than, than that. Sometimes. And that is why And there, this are, is. there are reasons why, and this is not a grand for it, though, mm -hmm. uh, the politics side of the election, we're talking about the security side of the yeah. election, there are reasons why the Edo election is more crucial, mm -hmm. uh, more, um, a bit more <laughs> tense, and the reasons why people might be emotional. Yeah. There are so many reasons. Ever in the uh, history of that. Uh, but that's so, very so, so Jay, one, one thing you also need to know is that that election, you cannot say that election is not going to be competitive. It's going to be one of the most competitive Highly. elections. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of heavyweight yeah. that have gone to head to head. We've mm. seen two people raise in, uh, in Adosa, but this time around, it's, it's gone beyond it's, that. It's We've seen brothers people. going against each other. <laughs> We've seen former political allies, uh, you know, yeah. yes. parting ways Cutting in this ways. election yeah. and causing and raising a lot of yeah. tension. So if you look at it, let's break it down. Where are these, what is the nature of these violence that we have seen? So when 35 we, of them. Yes, when we talk about the 35 um, cases of violence, this is the disaggregation, property destruction. You know, and also campaign Which materials, billboards, destruction, vehicles, and, vehicles yeah. and everything. Then you have the violent protests, protests that are not peaceful, that turn violent, shooting. Of course, I, I also mentioned earlier that one of the shooting results into uh, the unfortunate incident that led a, uh, the, to the death of a policeman. You have mob violence, you have kidnapping, you have verbal assault, and then you have physical attacks. And then we have seen this. So when you break that 35 down, of course, into those incidents, this is this disaggregation, this is the grouping. Of course, and this is what it looked like. But more, more, you have more cases of property destruction than the rest. However, mm. all of them are equally dangerous. We're going to be having a very inclusive and a very expanded conversation tonight. And that's why NSCDC comes into play. Exactly. What relates to the NSCDC is the most uh, of the, or the, the type of violence that we have seen. Yeah. NSCDC, by law, have their, pre uh, their, their premise to look after property and infrastructure, and infrastructure. of state. Yeah. So we see how their role is crucial also. In this and sense. these, the other is the premise <laughs> of the Nigerian <laughs> police force yeah. and the other sister yeah. agencies. So this is also very crucial. Yeah. But now let's look at those who are the perpetrators. Mm. Who are those ones that we should be having our eyes on yeah. in this type of violence that we've seen? Absolutely. So those 35 cases of um, electoral violence show now when you look at the perpetrator because in this in this violence mapping you have three major issues you record the violence who are the perpetrators then who are the victims now but when you look at the perpetrators you see the political talks which carry the highest more than 80% of the cases are recorded by the police. Most of them are being paid. Most of them. Paid, 
of course, and then they were just working for their money. Of course, some are also um, highly emotional because they also want to protect their interests. Probably they feel if their candidate lose whatever, they just want to protect their interests. Then you have party supporters. These ones are not all, but they are just emotional party supporters but, who decide. It, it takes, it's easy for you to turn from a party supporter to a, a political thug. Absolutely. A just it, is someone who to suddenly becomes violent. Just no a matter how honorable you are a minute ago, you could become a thug in the, in the space Absolute, of a second. Absolutely. Then you have the government, then you have um, some trace to the security agent themselves, and then, then you, the hoodlums. So, of course, this, let me explain, because somebody will be asking what is the difference between the hoodlums and the political thugs. Because when issues happen, there are some hoodlums who take advantage of the situation and then go further more than what the political thugs They may not be uh, they, established, they, paid, they, they are, or orchestrated, or planned. Their alliance are not even to any political So they just party. take advantage. They just take the advantage. So let's look at what the other, uh, those who are on the receiving end. Yes, the victims. So uh, you know I talked about the incident, the perpetrator and the victims. So victims, of course, party members, you know, you have civilians, you know, and then you have INEC official has mm -hmm. also been taught, and then you have security agency has also become a victim in these particular instances. But when you look at it, party members, you know, when the, the most, most of the issues also happen between in their inter-party, in some instances, intra-party. So the party members were also affected. And this is what the disaggregation of the victim is. It's so sad. And yeah. everybody's involved. Everybody's involved. And uh, you, you find either, yourself in any of this. You can be a citizen that is not interested. Yeah. You might be an interested party. The, member. the innocent people that are supposed to conduct, conduct, conduct elections might also be caught yeah. in the web. And security and personnel are supposed to protect. I a lot of the times. These guys, we really, really need to talk about protecting yeah. them yeah. because they are protecting others, but how about them? them. They need yeah. protection Absolutely. too, isn't it? And so let's look at the map. So this is disheartening, actually, and concerning. Uh, if you look at the mapping and the work that you and your team have yeah. done, it shows to me, I was looking for the green, I didn't find the green. Yes, the so green I, is supposed <laughs> to be areas that we'll look at as a safe haven if there's trouble in any part of the local government, of the 18 local governments yeah. in Edo State, where should we run to? But well, it does look like if there is trouble, there's no safe place in Edo State. You have to run to the neighboring, <laughs> neighboring state, isn't it? From the mapping that you have given, very likely of violence are the ones in red. In red, yeah. So, Chio, I know you are worried. You, you once asked that, ah, why is it that we don't have green? Unfortunately, we can't. Because when you put all the indices together, history of violence, hard to reach area, preparation of, um, of around the election. This is what the map is saying. And it's also letting us know that look, all the local government need to be given adequate attention. Of course, the one in red shows that a high likelihood of violence in those particular places. When, when you look at it, I don't want to be mentioning them one by one, but the one in amber, which is in yellow, talks about, look, it can move either side. It can be very here, likelihood. very likelihood. Sometimes I've seen likely Son. of a, a ton to be <laughs> the most, uh, uh, the most viol uh, violent ones. Absolutely, but with what you are saying, and also with one of the things you also need to look at is that the candidate, strong candidate, of course, uh, of course, uh, I mean, uh, around two major senatorial districts, all the senatorial districts are also pro pro producing candidates and other, uh, a lot of, uh, and a lot of things. This is not the time to begin to talk about the battleground yeah. where you see, but with what we have seen, every local government in Edo State need adequate security attention. And so this is probably where you find the city, the, the capital, Oredo, yes, Oredo. Oboha, this is the capital. And it tells us that is a, there's a likelihood. You will find the presence of a lot of security agents there. So, the police is saying about 30 something thousand uh, police officers will be deployed. We're seeing thousands of other security agencies. So if you ask yourself, guess, guess what? And those things have water bodies. Guess what? There are oil producing areas around this area that are prone to violence. Yeah. And those states also border several other, other states, states, which means that the security agencies have their work cut out for them. Okay. okay. Now, quickly. Early warning signal. So, this is what we have been able to see. Then, uncheck political party talks activity is one area we need to look at. And that is why we are here today. I am happy uh, the political parties are here. We need to find a conversation around the political party talk. Those supporters that 
are taking issues beyond. Then you have hate and provocative speeches. We've seen that on campaign. That is These becoming more concerning. Bigger. The proliferation of small and light arms. This is so. When when the policeman was killed, you find shooting oil here and there, and then you keep asking yourself, where, where did, they get, this, this where did they get this weapon from? Then building trust in the election management body is also a I mean a warning signal. It's also um, any warning signal. Then political arrest, we've seen that, and then we've seen news and bias report a bit because this um, is is a ground for misinformation and disinformation, and then activity of the court groups. These are early warning signal because, for instance, the activity of the court groups uh, you know if they are not checked if they are not put uh, they are just they are just ready ready the bed, um, the bed human is resource right. for, 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 for this fantastic yeah. job that you have done at King Pact giving us this sense of what this is giving us a good premise for us to start a conversation and I guess the speakers and the panelists are already getting geared up to have this yeah. conversation wherever you may be anywhere in the world you can be part of the conversation the hashtag is there hashtag edu election 2024 hashtag edu election security and this is where the conversation starts <laughs>